morning guys, welcome to today's video. Even though it's not Monday, it feels like Monday. I took Monday off to spend Claude's birthday with her, so I'm heading back to the shop. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a little update. I've been dailying the R34 for pretty much the most time ever. Now that in my eyes this car is almost complete, I've been really enjoying driving and I've probably put a solid thousand kilometers on it in the past week or two. That being said, I love this car. It's one of my favorite cars to drive. It's fast, it's comfortable. Couple super minor bugs to work out. Uh, when you delete the Hikus, it goes into like a uh, fail safe mode where the power steering gets heavy so we need to wire in like a little voltage regulator so I can adjust that to make it a little bit softer. And then just recently it started idling a little bit higher. It sounds like there's a vacuum leak so I'm driving over to the shop today so we can do a quick boost leak test and see if I like popped a line off somewhere because I couldn't visually see anything wrong. I think one of the funniest things driving this car, obviously the people from our generation know what a 34 GTR is and it attracts some attention but I feel like more than anything I'm around like old dudes that have no idea what they're looking at and it just looks like the biggest race mobile ever between the changing paint it's got a loud exhaust that makes these little bangs and then they see the right hand drive and they're just so confused and I love it even though you guys see it in videos I feel like I do less pulls with this car just because of the fact that it's all-wheel drive and it actually gets going to speed quickly Whereas I feel like in my 32 when I had it on a loose setup I probably like ripped on that thing more just because I liked spinning and I can make loud Noises and have fun with big bangs We don't have the car necessarily accelerating quickly. Anyway, we're going to the shop I'm gonna go get breakfast and then we'll touch base there. All right, so super quick update on stuff that's been going on in the shop I kind of walked you guys through one of the little issues that's been going on with this new plugs, uh, moved around coils, clean injectors, check for vacuum leaks, and there was one little tiny one that's still missing. So uh, we're gonna try a couple more things, but it doesn't appear to be anything obvious. Um, I don't know if I have explained some of the issues that we were having with the clutch setup on the S15, but we have decided to temporarily put the stock trans back in it until we get the actual production run of the PMC kit. Their kit comes with its own clutch setup that's designed to work with it and I had a custom one made and kind of had to like rig some stuff around to make it work and it, uh, it just didn't feel good and it wasn't really acting right and that's part of the reason I've been driving the car much. So that stuff's going in just so the car can be drivable. But I think what you guys are gonna see the most of in this video is some stuff that we're gonna be diving into with this old girl. I know you guys have been asking what the plan is for this and uh, in this video, we can dive into some of the plans and talk about it. All right, so to give you guys a little background on this thing, if you don't remember what happened, uh, I thought the engine was running a little funny that day and lo and behold, wound up losing all compression in one cylinder. Um, we didn't really do too much diagnosis at the track other than realizing there was zero compression on a cylinder. So we're gonna do another compression test and uh, use the old oil trick that will basically seal a cylinder if it does have like a bro broken ring or something, you just put a little oil down in there, which would tell us if it's bottom end or if possibly maybe it's just something in the head. But uh, either way, we're planning to put a completely different engine in here. It'll just be easier to do a test with it while it's still in the car. Um, additionally, I'm assuming this probably happened from a stuck injector and one cylinder maybe went lean or something. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll throw the injectors in the tester. And we'll look at those too, and we'll try to figure out why this thing blew up. Well, I didn't need a compression test to find the problem. Marco, come look. Oh, you, you see it? Hold on. Let me let me angle. Don't say, don't say anything. I was yeah, don't, be don't surprised. Say, don't say anything. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I can explain is like that the person wanted to go choo choo praying. Do you see the problem? The what hole. is the problem here? You don't see? I mean, I see, but. Yeah, that's. Looks fine. Let me see. Unfortunately. <laughs> choo choo on the middle of the piston? Uh. Close. Come on. It wasn't the middle. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. That's more than what he's... It would take a little bit more than a puddle of oil to get compression back on that cylinder. So wow. we've, we've definitely got some debris floating around. I wouldn't be surprised if the head's damaged there too from that. But that's a so, pretty catastrophic failure. No, that's pretty bad. It doesn't... Being for the, how much those pistons cost and how much R&D went into those pistons. So I'm wondering, because, I mean, we'll see when we pull it apart. I'm wondering if we're going to see any sort of, um, like... Sporting. No, like I'm wondering if we melted a piston or if that just broke. Because you know what I also see? It looks see? clean. You know what I also see? Hold on, let me angle this a little bit differently. So I'm having a hard time finding it on here, but it looked like we might have cracked the cylinder wall. Let me see. But would that have broken the piston? Well, when it happened in Cali last year, um, when you broke, we cracked the wall, there was obvious signs of that. Mm -hmm. This block is probably good. toast, would you agree? Uh, I mean, did it get bored out to what? Uh, no, I think these ones we only did a quarter over for this so exact reason. We should be so, able pro to tip save guys, it. if you ever overboard your block, don't go half over because now we get another try. 
quick little Drift HQ update. Got a big shipment of DEI stuff in. Most notably, uh, one of my favorite things are their Black Onyx Turbo Shields. So if you guys need one, we got a bunch in stock. Uh, other kind of standout stuff you guys haven't already seen in a bunch of my videos. We have the Corvette heat shielding kits for like the trans tunnel area. It's really cool. It's a big issue on those cars and it's like a direct fit already cut kit for it. Um, and then just a bunch of other cool heat management stuff. So all this will be on the Drift HQ site. We also have really good stock on seats right now, specifically the uh, Prisma FIA seats, which are a really, really good deal for the price. Uh, so be sure to check those out. And then also, um, we have some pretty cool manifolds from Artec. I don't know if I've shown these to you guys in the videos, but this is actually a very unique car that this is for. It's for the Rally Art Edition Lancer. If you don't know much about it, it's kind of like a mini Evo, but it's not an Evo. Small differences, and there's not a lot of companies that make nice manifolds for them. So the fact that we have a cast manifold for that is pretty cool. And then of course, the Evo 10 Divided Collector. Another really cool cast unit. If you guys get an Evo 10, definitely a good option for you. Got a bunch of Swiss tracks now in the merch area. It's looking sick. Also, quick reminder, still got some Invitational merch left over. Got a bunch of these cool slap stickers that come with any Invitational merch, and I'm always happy to sign anything for you guys. All you gotta do is leave in the order of comments, LZMFG. Quick disclaimer, uh, part of my New Year's resolution, or one of the things I really wanna work on next year, now that we've got the compound, Drift HQ, and a rather complex business unit compared to what it used to be, I really wanna get more on top of uh, the finance side. And uh, now, while we've always been fine in the eyes of the IRS, we've never really done a great job at analyzing and separating stuff internally. And the past two days, uh, I think probably because I got a chair that's comfortable and I can actually sit down and focus for once, I have just been laser honed in on a bunch of numbers, trying to separate things and really trying to get a better understanding in order to budget and uh, plan for next year as best as possible. So. I've been a little brain dead and that's why I haven't really been filming too much in the shop. And I kind of shot myself in the foot because I was so excited to pull the end of the S15 figure what was wrong with it and found out in the first 10 seconds. Everyone said I should just not include that clip and just pretend like we were surprised, but I'm not gonna do that to you guys. So I'm struggling, I'm on my second cup of coffee. Side note, if you guys have never tried it, three pumps of lavender syrup, sounds wild. Buy it on Amazon, try it, trust me. Like my favorite latte ever. Two shots of espresso, a little bit of milk, and some lavender, boss. I want to ride my bike more too. We're planning a bike trip with the boys. A lot of things going on. I'm probably just not going to upload today. I don't want to upload a meh video for you guys, so hopefully more exciting stuff will happen tomorrow. Quick little upstairs update. Still got a couple final touches on the glass, some little trim pieces that are missing. Uh, pool table's been sick. We've been playing up here a little bit and that's been fun. Been working on getting it clear. I just finally ordered a TV for up here, so I'm hoping to get the TV up there, some speakers, and have this be like a little hangout area. And uh, the sim rig that we'll have up here, I gotta bring my computer and some of my gear over from the other house, but it's turning out sick. I got a curved monitor for this one. I hate the triples, they're annoying. And this looks sick, and will pretty much have the same exact uh, effect, so. I personally like playing with VR, but some people don't, and uh, the triple screens just get annoying because they get knocked loose and stuff. Um, I'm thinking about jumping back into the podcast stuff. I literally did one with Chelsea when he was here at the compound forever ago, back before the RTR stuff was even a thing. And it'll be really cool to upload, but I haven't decided where I wanted that platform to live, but I've been really liking the YouTube member section, so I think I might just choose to put the podcast on there. So stay tuned on that. Um, what else up here? Still gotta finish building out the bar section. This little package that I got today, I don't normally film stuff like this. But a subscriber by the name of Cam from the build room, I believe out of Australia, sent me a cool care package with Bunch of candy and stuff, but the best part, he got some artwork made uh, making me the JDM Jay Leno. And I love it, it's the funniest thing ever. Me and Mike were dying at this. This is obviously for Colette, it's a little small for me, it's not really my style, but super appreciative. Thank you, Cam. Check out his channel if you guys want. That package certainly brightened my day. With all mechanical things ruled out for the R34, the only thing left to do is a leak down test to see if there's an issue with the head. Johan's on that. I just did a test on the injectors from the S15 and it appears as if we don't have any apparent problems or blockage on any of them visually. And obviously there may be a variance, but it doesn't appear as if one has just got completely clogged or whatever, no visual debris in them. So I'm leaning towards just a pure like piston failure on the S15 rather than a lean condition, but we'll see once we pull the head off the block if there's any damages around the bore, and we'll be able to get a little bit better understanding of what happened. that point. Smithfire's driving us nuts. 
so the next step was just looking to see if there's anything that struck out to us in the head. Maybe something got out of whack. Uh, we're going to grab a feeler gauge and just check clearances to see maybe a shim broke or something messed up. But I, I would have think that we would have seen that in a leak down test. We'll see that in the leak down test and as well we would hear it. Especially with these motors. It's just noisy from factory. Like they're pretty loud. The bow train is. But we'll see. I don't know. where It's, it's kind of like at that point where what else can it be? Like we're taking bow covers off. The leak down test is good. Compression the is good. Thing to me is like the ignition cuts and big bangs and stuff usually damages stuff in the head. If it's going to damage anything, it's going to damage something in the head. So. Hmm. Hate to be that guy, I think we're gonna throw in the towel. I want your guys' help. I know that there are some RB26 people watching this. Please offer assistance. I'm gonna run you through exactly what the problem was and uh, what the symptoms are and what we've gone through checking so far. Uh, started no lift shifting, and then once I kind of started, I feel like abusing the car more than normal, I noticed the misfire became a little more sporadic at idle, like it was here and then it wasn't there, and then a little bit more abuse, and it basically turned into always misfiring at idle. The second you rev it, clears up. The second you give it some RPM, like it misfires a little bit and then starts to clear up. Um, thought it was a vacuum leak because the idle raised a little bit. Did a boost leak test, found one tiny little leak on one of the uh, turbo inlets. So it's definitely not that. Um, that made no change. Uh, played with everything in the ECU that we could. Jamie helped me with that. We tried trimming out cylinder number two. Doesn't really seem to help that much. Changed injectors, cleaned injectors, swapped coil packs, swapped spark plugs put a new coil harness in, uh, smoke tested the engine, verified timing, inspected with the valve covers off, uh, put a noid light on the injector to make sure that the firing pattern was normal and it was. Uh, we checked continuity on the injector harness, but we haven't checked continuity yet all the way to the ECU. I haven't tried changing ECU, and we've tried like the brake clean check on all the throttle body places to see if there's a vacuum leak there that could be causing this. But symptom, oh, and compression tech, perfect and leak down test perfect so very bizarre very strange and it's very frustrating because i can't physically focus or concentrate on anything else until i can figure out what the f is going on with this thing so hopefully one of you guys knows uh i'm gonna reach out to hawkins he usually has dealt with all the crazy rb stuff i hope he's not gonna tell me like my block is cracked or something which wouldn't make any sense but i feel like it's like a rb thing you know so yeah hopefully hopefully this thing won't end up in the bottom of the ocean like another gtr that you guys probably know about just kidding, you don't want to ever go there. But this is annoying. Hopefully next time you guys see this car in a video, we will have a solution. But until then, this may be the end of the video. Oh, let's see how long the video is and we'll make a determination from there. <laughs> it's an engine, it's a race car, it's rubber, it's a door. Speaking of race cars, Johan got a new whip. Yup, new daily. You want to show him? Look at this thing. Tell us about what you got here, Johan. Um, it's a 100. It's a non-turbo automatic. Um, I missed my old one. Sold it to buy the Supra, so it was not a bad, you know, sell. But I missed it. They're great cars, and I just had another had to have another one. And I found this one at the auction in Japan, and there you go. Um, had it now for two months. I mean, bought it three months ago, but it just showed up so clean yeah. it reminds me so much of mine because my car was originally na automatic right and uh the paint is like the same pearl and it looks like it's in amazing shape yeah um so like you saw the video when jimmy got his and you just that made you really want one is that why you got it or yeah yeah i just like i saw jimmy i was like nope i gotta just step it up and get one like him yep and there you go that's how it works in the yep. world of youtube that's how it is we all like, just copy each other exactly mm -hmm. now i'm just gonna turbo it and do the six p Slam it on Slam some. It on, what what wheels does he always put on his cars? Uh, the the ones with the big spokes and the fat lips. Meisters. No, not um, those. This is all Crans, cars. maybe, Crans. maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah. Something like Weds. I don't know. Webs. We're not big wheel guys. Three piece. Big Jay Z guys. Yeah. But anyway, I'm stoked for you. Thank you. What the heck? 
Yo, he just engine braked over us. <laughs> that sounded weird. Yep. Hell yeah. It's like he stopped for a second. This thing's fancy. Uh, we're gonna have some chaser stuff hopefully coming soon with my chaser. We'll check in with Johan as he gets some stuff done with us. But I think we've got some other exciting news we should tell him in the next video. That yeah. I've, I've just realized that we haven't told anyone about, so we should probably do that soon. Yep. So you guys will be stoked to hear about that. Also, fun fact too, your original chaser came over in the same container as my chaser, right? Yeah. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, so yours came in the same container, then my buddy Mike bought it. I was actually almost, I almost bought that car right before he bought it, just cause it was a nice like stock, unmolested, low mileage, really clean. And I just like wanted a daily and I didn't want it daily the other one. But then he bought it, so he did everything to it and then uh, ended up in your hands. And funny enough, like, both of them came in the same container. Then there was another local one that came in the same container. The one that got taxed, right? Yeah. The dudes kept selling it for more and more and more and more money. And yep. It's crazy. And uh, it needed some more work on that one, but it was clean. But, you know, not as clean as this one or yours and or mine. Mine, it was surprisingly pretty clean. So. I just wanted to get the point across. So you're like an OG Jay-Z X100 guy, you know? I wouldn't say OG, but like... I, I mean, yeah. you know, back, back before they started coming over, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, legit, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right you know before they were legit. Yeah, right before they were legit. All right, guys, we got to run. I hope you enjoyed this video. We got a party bus showing up at the compound. We're all hopping in, and we're going to a restaurant for like a little New Year's party. Stoked. Rachel's coming, right? Yep. Oh, it's going to be a good drink. time. It's going to be a good time. We bring the gorilla soup. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> that'll be funny. All right, guys, well, anyway. This is Yohan's new car. It's super sick, and I'm stoked for you, bro. Thank you. You, you don't see? I see. Yeah, that's fine. Unfortunately. Just you in the middle of this thing. Uh, come on. It wasn't the middle.